November. And this Tuesday, August 2nd, voters will head to the polls for primary races in Arizona and Michigan, where abortion is front and center. In Arizona, the Republican gubernatorial frontrunner, Carrie Lake, has called abortion the, quote, ultimate sin. Arizona's Republican Senate frontrunner, Blake Masters, has promised to only confirm federal judges, uh, judicial nominees, rather, who will say Roe was wrongly decided. Both, as you can imagine, have been endorsed by Trump. In Michigan, the Trump-backed gubernatorial candidate, Tudor Dixon, has called for an abortion ban that includes banning in cases of rape and incest. But arguably, the most impactful vote this Tuesday isn't for a politician, but rather a referendum, the first of its kind since Roe was overturned. Kansas will hold a vote on an amendment that would alter the state constitution to say it no longer protects the right to an abortion. NBC's Dasha Burns filed this report earlier from Kansas. What's at stake here? The right to choose. This is absolutely an issue that if uh, the restrictions are too high or if there's too much controversy, that um, people's lives are at stake. Not just the baby, but the mother as well. I want to encourage everybody to vote for this amendment. If you have any pro-life uh, feelings or um, thoughts that you might have on the stance, this is the time to do that. My next guest, LaFonza Butler, is the president of EMILY's List, the political action committee dedicated to electing Democratic female candidates who support abortion rights. She is now out with a new op-ed highlighting the connection between the GOP's efforts to chip away at abortion access and limiting voting rights. Butler writes, quote, when black women are disenfranchised, we lose our freedom to make decisions on things that directly and disproportionately impact our lives and harm our communities, like state abortion bans that are expected to harm nearly six million black women. LaFonza Butler joins me now. LaFonza, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with that Kansas vote coming up on Tuesday. If the state does end up removing the constitutional right to abortion access, what precedent will this set for other states to follow? Well, thanks so much for, for having me, Eamon. Glad to be with you. Look, Kansas is the first state where this, and this question is going to be put before the voters. We hope that the Kansas voters are going to be able to see through the uh, lies and, and trickery that Republican Party is putting forward. Um, and you know, we know that this is going to be a hard-fought battle, what we believe to be true. Uh, and I think what, you, what was mentioned in your earlier segment, that poll after poll after the Roe decision has uh, definitely indicated that Democrat, the Democratic Party is, is the party that is standing with the majority of Americans. And we hope that the Kansas voters are actually able to make their way through this morass of disinformation and misinformation and continue to represent their own sort of Kansas values. And, you know, for ballot measures to come, set the example uh, that voters are going to push back against the attack on their freedoms, the freedoms to make decisions about their own bodies and their access to the ballot box. Yeah, and I wanted to kind of ask you to, to talk a little bit more about that, about the piece that you wrote and how you see the connection between abortion rights and voting rights. Explain that to our audience. It's a great question. You know, it made me really, as I was drafting the piece, it made me really, what I was really thinking about was the um, Texas. Uh, one of, you know, the interesting thing about Texas that I found that the first um, legislative legislative uh, language that was introduced, SB1, was the restrictions on access to the ballot, which was then followed by SB8. You see that pattern in state after state, whether it's states like Georgia or Oklahoma, Indiana or others, the connection between the Republican-controlled legislatures all across the country are coupling these two issues, um, access to the ballot and at, uh, freedom to make decisions about our own bodies. And then you add in the attacks that are being directed towards the LGBTQ uh, community. You add in the lack of action that has been taken in Republican state legislatures on gun rights and gun control. Uh, and it is clear to me that it is, this is a coordinated attack to maintain power, to c 